Hey everybody, um, I'm doing a little video about reducing fractions. This is a lesson 81 in the book, and um, also I've had I have some links uh, to the IXL section to practice once you uh, kind of have a good handle of, of how to do it. Um, but uh, so um, I thought I'd remind you guys of um, when we made equivalent fractions, which mean equivalent fractions with equivalent fractions. We made equivalent fractions before everything all happened. Um, and equivalent fractions, I think I actually spelled that wrong. I did. A and equivalent. I knew it. So equivalent fractions mean just equal. Okay? Equal fractions. And we did this thing where we multiplied by a fraction equal to 1. Okay, so if I have like one whole square and I turn it into a fraction, this is parts of a whole, this is the same as each one of these is one half, right? Each one of those is a half. So if I have two of them, then the whole thing, all of it, would be equal to two halves. And that would be the same thing if I had three thirds and so on four-fourths, these all equal one whole number, okay? Um, and so I wanted to, to remind us about this because in the past we learned about equivalent fractions where we took a fraction such as, you know, we have, and we had this whole thing, which is um, one half, okay? And we were talking about making it bigger by multiplying by uh, one, but we would use a fraction to do that. So we did this whole thing, and maybe you'll remember this picture where I drew this big one. And again, trying the one is not the important part, um, but, uh, but the whole idea is that I'm able to fit a fraction in here and it just reminds me that we use one. So really the whole point of this is that you need a fraction that equals one. So if I say one to take one half and turn it into a fraction with a denominator, meaning the bottom number, equal to, let's say, six, okay? Then I needed to put a fraction in here equal to one, right? So some fraction equal to one that I could then multiply by this. And remember, multiplication is top times top, bottom times bottom. So I'd be multiplying these top numbers and then these bottom numbers. Okay, um, and so if I'm saying two times this number and I'm equaling six, okay, then I know two, because I know my fact families, two times three equals six, right? And so we, we see that and we say, okay, well, what is a fraction equal to one? Or what's the numerator going to be to make this a fraction equal to one? Well, as we saw before, I have... I'm saying this is one third, two thirds, three thirds. If I want the whole thing, then I need to have the same on the top as on the bottom, same on the top and bottom. So I put this here. So now I have one half times three thirds equals what? Well, it's one half. I'm going to make this fraction bigger. So two times three is six. One times three is three. So what we just found out was that one half is the exact same or equivalent fraction, it's equal, to 3 sixths. And all we did was we multiplied by 1, which when we multiply anything by 1, it stays the same. However, we see that if you multiply with fractions, it kind of makes it look different, but it's actually the same thing. 3 sixths is the exact same thing as 1 half. You can look at it kind of like this, where if I have this being 1 half, 1 two, three sixths, and then this is the whole thing, three sixths is exactly half, okay? So this was the lesson that we did before, and now we're doing the exact opposite. So reducing fractions is the opposite of this. So we're taking something like three sixths, and we're finding, okay, well, can I reduce this number? Can I, can I go backwards? Can I make it smaller? They say it in the lowest terms possible, meaning the lowest numbers that we can possibly get down to because we might like to make things easy on us. And when we make things easy on us, we have smaller numbers, it's easier for our brain to work. You know how it is. So to do this, 
instead of multiplication, we have to do the opposite, which is, yeah, you said division. I heard it. I heard it from you guys. So we're going to have to do some division, okay? Now, not crazy division, not long division. We're just doing single-digit numbers. So, for instance, I'm just going to start with 3, 6 because we just talked about it, okay? So with reducing fractions, all right, and I am going to say I want to reduce 3 6 and I want to find out, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm not going to multiply. I'm going to divide both of these numbers by a fraction equal to 1 because if we divide by 1 or multiply by 1, it's the same thing. Dividing by 1 keeps the same number, okay? So if I am taking 3 6 and I am dividing by a fraction equal to 1, okay, then I need to be able to divide something that goes into both of these, all right? So to do that, I'm going to start looking at all the numbers that, that I could go, okay? Um, so if I divide 3 and 6 by 1, that's not going to change anything, right? This is still going to be 3 6. So I'm going to take the next, I'm just going to start climbing up the numbers. Can I divide 3 and 2? Divided by 3, 3 divided by 2, can I do that? No, I can't divide 3 divided by 2. I could if I was wanting to get extra fractions and decimals, but in this example, we want it to be whole. 3 divided by 2 does not equal a whole number, so that's not going to work. Okay, so I'm checking off my numbers. I'm saying, okay, 1's not good, 2's not good. Now let's go to 3. Can I divide both of these numbers, both 3 and 6, by the next number, which is 3? Can I do that? Now, we talked about before that 3 thirds is equal to 1, right? Because it's the same on the top and the same on the bottom, okay? So if I have 3 6, can I divide 3 by 3 and get a whole number? Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so yes. Can I divide 6 divided by 3? And so we know that 3 goes into 6 two times, right? So 3 times 2 is 6, or 6 divided by 3 equals 2. And if you remember before when we did the multiplication and we were making the number bigger, it was 1 half that became 3 6. So what we just did is we did 3 6 divided by 3 thirds. Okay, and remember 3 thirds equals 1, so that we reduced it down to 1 half. Okay, so I know that that's a lot, so we're going to do another one um, because what happens when we get bigger numbers or, let's see, let's get crazy. All right, so let's just say I want to take the number 2 eighths. Okay, now I can go through my list of numbers and just check them off until I find something that works. But one of the things that I always do first is always see, are both numbers even? Okay, because if both numbers are even, then we have we have a number that's going to go into both of those evenly. Okay, and what is that number? Well, if it's even, the number is 2. So I know that I can divide, well, 2 eighths, both the numbers are even. So I can divide both of these by 2. I know that for a fact. Okay, um, 1 doesn't work, we know that. So 2 is going to work. So now I'm reducing. I'm just cutting these in half. I'm saying, well, 2 divided by 2 equals 1. 8 divided by 2 now equals 4. Just like, if it's even, just try and cut them in half. Just cut them in half. Now, let me show you something else that can happen. Now, what happens if we have something like 4 sixteenths? And we're saying, hey, let's reduce it. Well, we just talked about how if it's even, we can reduce and we can divide by 2. We can break them up, cut them in half, and makes it makes it nice and simple for us. Um, so I know that 4 and 16 are, um, they are even. So I'm going to just go ahead and take a 2. Okay, so I'm thinking about my numbers. Okay, this one doesn't work. This one does work. Great, let's cut it in half. Okay, so I'm going to do this. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. 16 divided by 2 equals 8. Done! Or am I? No. 
So here's the trick, because 2 eighths is the number we just worked on, right? So 2 eighths can also be divided um, and reduced. It's not in its lowest terms. Even though I reduced, I took 4 sixteenths and I turned it into 2 eighths, it's still not in its lowest terms. I can still divide again and cut them in half. So I can do this again and divide by 2, divide by 2, which we can draw our little 1, or we don't need to draw the 1, but I'm just going to do it for fun. Ooh, that rhymes. Huh? Um, and so we're going to just cut them, in, cut them in half again. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and we're back to where we were at the first round. Okay, now here, here's the thing. Okay, instead of doing, and this is where knowing your math facts really well will really help. So keep practicing that reflex and working on your math facts because there are other numbers that go in evenly to 4 and 16. Okay, I know 2 does. We just talked about that. 3, does 3 go into 4 evenly? No, 3 doesn't. But 4, does that go in? Yes, it goes into 4. Does 4 go into 16? No, it does. 16. Yes, certainly does. Okay, so I can also divide this by 4. Divided, divided by 4. Okay, 4 fourths still equals 1, right? We know that it still equals 1, so this is a way to reduce. 4 sixteenths, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. Now, what did I just do here? Since I used the 4 to divide, I split it up by a bigger number, I was able to cut out that middle section in that last problem, right? And when I cut it the first time, it became 2 eighths. Since I was able to divide by 4 and 4, right, 4 fourths, then I skipped that middle number. I didn't have to reduce again. I was able to get it to its lowest terms the first time. And that's what we're trying to kind of work on. What number will go into both of those numbers evenly, okay? But remember, it's not always even numbers, right? I can have something like 3 twelfths. Okay, well, 12 is even, <laughs> but 3 is not. So I'm going to just use my numbers and go through until I find something that works, okay? So we know 1 doesn't ever work because it's just going to keep the number the same. So do you think I need that 1? Can I just like, I'm just going to get rid of it this time. I'm just going to say, hey, I'm dividing both of these by some number, the fraction, so that I can turn it into a new fraction, okay? And eventually you're not going to need this middle section. You're going to be doing this more in your head. Um, but for the time being, it's nice to see it visually. So 2 goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 3 because 3 is an odd number, right? So that's not going to work. Does 3 go in? Well, 3 goes into 3. Does 3 go into 12? 3, 6, 9, 12. Good. It does. So 3 will go in evenly. So when I'm looking at this number, I might think, oh, it's odd. It's already in its lowest terms. It's already reduced, but it's not. We've got to be careful. Okay, so 3 goes into both of those. So I can divide this by 3 thirds, which 3 thirds equals 1. So we're making keeping the fraction the same. We're making it equivalent fraction. We're just making it smaller. Uh, lower terms. This is actually not smaller. The fraction is still the same. Anyway, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And we now have 1 fourth. Ah, that's the same fraction we just had. Okay, so reducing fractions um, takes some math fact knowledge, and it takes just being patient and trying to figure out what number goes in. Always start from the lowest, start with 2, then go to 3 and 4, and typically you'll find it pretty quickly. Um, so that's reducing fractions to get started, and now do some practice on IXL. All right, take care, guys.